Personally, I don't believe in arguments. I understand that disagreements, having different perspectives, and not seeing eye to eye is a common part of life. However, to argue, I don't feel like that is effective communication. In fact, if you look up what an argument is, an argument is the most disruptive form of communication. An argument is where two people yell and scream and call names. Neither of them listens. Neither of them communicates effective messages. To me, arguing is the death of a relationship, whether that's a friendship, a business ship, uh, a connection between you and your boss, a connection between you and your administrator, you and your student, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. It should be your goal to abolish arguing. So here are five things that you should never do in an argument. The first thing you want to avoid doing is name calling someone. Don't label them as an idiot, a fuckboy, a bitch, a scumbag, a dirtbag, a hood rat. When you call somebody names, what you do is you box them in. You box them in in your mind and you box them in from their own perception. So they may be expressing themselves to you. They may be trying to show you who they are and you're just boxing them in. That does no good. Some of the names that we call each other, it actually has the ability to make the other person feel small. So if you're interacting with someone because you're looking to gain something, because you're looking to become a better person from them, you're looking to have a better relationship with them, you want them to be the greatest they can be. All the energy that they give you is really a product of what you've given them. This is about psychology, so you need to give them the best you can give them so they can give you the best that they have. That's gonna make your life better anyway, so don't name call because then you're just gonna make people small. You're gonna make people less than you and you don't want to do that. The second worst thing you can do in an argument or disagreement is to cut people off. Don't cut people off. Let people talk. Even if you don't agree, even if it doesn't make sense, let them express themselves fully. It's so important that people get their entire thought out. The easiest way to get someone to shut down is to cut them off because eventually they're going to think in their head, this person doesn't care what I have to say anyways, so why do I keep talking? Let me just shut up. And that's not what you want. You don't want that passive aggressive behavior. You want Two people who can communicate no matter the difference. Hey, this is what I think, this is what you think, this is how I feel, this is how I feel. Boom, 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 boom. You don't want someone who just shuts down and runs from the conversation. People who shut down are often people who aren't listened to. So don't cut somebody off. Be quiet and listen. Your ego makes you unwilling to listen to another person because your ego says, I need to talk, I need to be heard. My point is more relevant. It might be more relevant. What you have to say might be more important, but a conversation is always a collaboration. So that means you have to shut up. That means you have to shut up and you have to let them talk. You can't cut people off. It is unfair in an argument. It doesn't resolve anything. Be quiet, let them talk. Number three, this is the worst thing people do in arguments. They go around and around and around in circles. You have to understand that when you have a problem, there is a certain mindset you should take on as a couple, as a person, as a friend. You can go through all the problems or what I recommend you do is take a solution-based mindset. A solution-based mindset works like this. So we have a problem. We have an argument. We have an issue. Cool. Let's get to the root cause. Let's get down to what is causing this. Not problems from yesterday, not problems from yesteryear. Let's get down to what is causing this one problem right now. And let's not focus on anything else. Let's not bring up an argument from four weeks ago. Let's not bring up what you did last year on this same date. Let's focus on this problem right now. The way we focus on this problem is both people share their sides of the perspective of this specific problem. Don't bring up other things. This specific problem. Both people collaborate together and bring Bring solutions. This is called having a solution based mindset. Both people bring solutions to this one specific problem. Now, the, the final solution might be a collaborative effort between a little bit of what you suggested and a little bit of what you suggested. So don't think that your one solution is the only solution. Be willing to compromise on the solution. You may not get all of what you want. They may not get all of what they want. But if you can get a little bit of what you want, they get a little bit of what they want, it works for both of you, that's called a compromise. And understand that some compromises might not be 50-50. Some compromises might be 20-80 and that's okay. 
way. If we're both working together to change a behavior, to change an idea, to get rid of conflict, because let's remember, arguing is conflict and stress. We don't want conflict and stress in our relationships because that, that shuts down our immune system. That shuts down our nervous system. That takes away our happiness. We want happiness. We want good vibes. So let's figure out what compromise we need. I don't need you to meet me halfway. If it's 20, 80 today, cool. If it's 70, 30 the next time, cool. Because realistically, everything might not be 50-50. So don't think that a solution-based thinker has to have a 50-50 mindset. It may not work that way. Sometimes a compromise is zero, 100, but that's just how it works. Number four, and it's hard for me to say this without laughing because I've experienced this so many times and I'm not trying to make fun of anybody. Don't, hey. <laughs> Number four, don't do this while arguing. Do not try to express yourself while you're crying. If you're having a serious argument, it is one of the hardest things to first of all understand. And secondly, expressing yourself while you're crying really is not as effective as this. Crying, go through the extreme emotion that came with the tears, sit back, Blow out those vibes that don't make sense. And then communicate it. You're still coming from a place of passion. You're still coming from your heart. But now, since you've taken your time, you've enabled your brain to guide you, to lead you. Crying is normal. And I'm not trying to shame people who cry. All of us cry. All humans cry. Even the guys who want to say, oh, I don't cry. I'm tough. Bro, you cry too. We all have we all have cried at one point or another. But with that being said, let the tears go. Especially if you're a cry. Like, if you are a crier, let your tears go first. Maybe write it down. Right? That might help a lot, actually. Write down your thoughts. Write down what you're thinking, what you're feeling, because then you can read it back and you can say, hey, this is what's really important to me. Uh, this doesn't matter too much. This is what's really important to me. And then you can express that. Don't just try to argue while you're crying. And don't try to argue with someone who's crying because they're in a, in a vulnerable state. They're not thinking logically anyway. If you're a crier, understand it, accept it, but deal with it more effectively than just crying and trying to resolve things in that moment. You gotta pull yourself back, take a moment, and then come back when you're ready. Number five, don't expect your solution to be the only solution. You have to be willing to collaborate. You have to be willing to compromise. You have to be willing to see their perspective. If you are arguing, the reason you are arguing is because people are not seeing eye to eye. So don't let your ego fight the battle for you. Become egoless. And what that means is, I don't have to win. If you find yourself arguing, it's very helpful if you and your partner have the same mindset. I don't have to win. Because what good is it if you win an argument, you're just jostling and wrestling words with your partner, but now they feel like shit and vice versa. Don't take the mindset, don't take the position that I have to win. I have to prove that I'm right. You might be right, but so what? It doesn't matter. We're talking about people's feelings. We're talking about two people trying to coexist. We're talking about two people trying to potentially build a family or save a family, keep a family together. And so if you take the competitive, I have to win mindset, you might be making them small. You might be littling them. You might be putting them on a pedestal 10 steps underneath you. So in an argument, never feel like you need to be right. In fact, I encourage you to actually say that. Hey, I'm not trying to win. No one needs to win here. The only thing we need to do is collaborate. Use these words if you feel yourself getting in an argument. Let's collaborate. Let's work together. I am not against you. I am not your enemy. We are fighting the same battle. These are things you guys need to be saying when you get in beef with each other. We are fighting the same battle. We are on each other's team. We are working together. Man and woman can say both of these things. These are empowering affirmations that can change your relationship when you're having conflict. I am on your team. We are working together. There is nothing that we can't overcome together. We can do this. Baby, let's put our our minds and our hearts together so we can get through this. Do you believe in me? Because I believe in you. These are things you need to say to each other. And the last thing that I really recommend saying is this. Everything is going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We'll get through it. Give each other peace of mind and know that you're not fighting each other. You're fighting with each other. You are not fighting each other. You're fighting with each other. You are teammates. The best book that I wrote on dating is called Dear Love Life. If you want it, click the link below. If you need a book on healing, getting over an ex, moving on, click the link below and read Dear Soul, Love After Pain. If you want a book on self-love, Dear Queen Journey. If you want a book on how to get your brand out there, how to make more money, how to quit your job, how to create the accelerated success is a choice. And if you want to be entertained 
poetry. You want to fall in love again. You want to know what self-love feels like. If you want to know what it feels to have a good, healthy relationship, this is what real love feels like. All five of my books can be found at the link below. Peace and love to you.